Hello and welcome to day one, session one, the digitalization opportunities for hospitality. My name is Tracy Hartford and I'm the Vice President for Client Services at Windover Construction, a full service construction management firm that works across a variety of markets, including hospitality. I am honored to be your moderator today and have this opportunity to talk and ask questions of this esteemed panel. I will begin by briefly introducing our panel and asking each person to share a few additional words um, also, the state of the industry for your region um, with the audience as well. So be, to begin, please join me in welcoming Neil Patel. Neil currently serves as the Vice Chairman of the AAHOA Asian American Hotel Owners Association and is the Managing Partner of Blue Chip Hotels, a company specializing in hotel management. Neil, would you like to say a few words? Of course. Thank you so much, Tracy, for having me. And uh, it's very exciting, especially when we can gather everyone from all across the globe, uh, like I'm in San Francisco tonight and uh, meeting with our membership for a meeting tomorrow. But it's all about getting out. Um, I think it's time. I know for the last year and a half, we've all been home, but the industry is making a good comeback, especially for the economy and limited service uh, in the United States, which the business are better than they were in 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Abbas Al Shabasi, Corporate Director of Information and Technologies for Sunrise Resorts and Cruises. Sunrises currently owns and manages 13 resorts and seven cruises, beautifully scattered in the most authentic locations Egypt has to offer. Abbas, would you like to say a few words, please? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Good morning. First, from let's say now in Egypt, uh, six uh, five sixteen a.m. So uh, it's a great to, and the honor to me to join you on this event. Uh, Sunrise is, uh, is, is a management company and own uh, 17 uh, hotels and five or six night cruises between Sharm Sheikh and Hurghada and uh, Marsalam and the Cairo. And you have new uh, recently one hotel uh, close to uh, uh, a new capital. So it's great to, to join you uh, in this event to explain about the digitalization uh, revolutions in, in, in tourism and industry. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Finally, I would like to introduce my colleague, Amar Rafat, Vice President of Virtual Design and Construction and Technology for Windover Construction. Armor is a leader and expert in the use of construction industry's most cutting edge technologies, which help streamline projects and procurement. Armor? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Tracy. Uh, glad to be here uh, and uh, to have this great discussion uh, with uh, all the hospitality experts. Uh, I, uh, uh, I am the Vice President of VDC and Technology at Wondova Construction, a full service, employee -owned, full employee owned firm that provides comprehensive pre construction planning, estimating services, design build, virtual design construction services in education, healthcare, commercial, senior living, and of course, hospitality. And uh, excited to share with you and uh, discuss uh, how we are innovatively uh, supporting hospitality projects and hotels to be uh, very efficient and to respond to any challenges. Thank you, Armour. And I would be remiss if I didn't address, um, unfortunately, Fred Gordy could not join us this evening. He's the Director of Cybersecurity for Intelligent Buildings, um, and unfortunately is ill this evening. So. He's not able to join us, but we wish him a speedy recovery. So now let's kick this off. Digitalization has quickly changed many industries. Hospitality, which has been traditionally focused on high touch client facing services has quickly moved towards more high tech solutions with less client interaction and touch such, such as mobile room keys, smart room technologies. Our conversation today will discuss the digitalization opportunities to improve processes and enhance that customer experience in the hotel industry. So I will kick it off with Neil. Um, you're, you're talking to a lot of hotel owners. So give us maybe the state of kind of what's happening um, that you're seeing from your perspective, but also how are hotel owners restructuring and adapting to leverage the digitalization opportunities that can help them improve their operation and processes while delivering that customer value? I think it's now more than ever, it's so important for us to embrace technology. Uh, 50 years ago, if you go back and look at the history of our industry, a guest would come to the hotel and once they go back home, they want the exact same things at home. Now it's completely opposite. Guests are now coming to our hotels expecting the same things that they have at home, 
but they want to have the same things in the hotel. So how can we make things personal for the guest? And you, I think Tracy, you brought up about digital check-in when guests come in, but at the same time, we also have to look at what mix um, or what the demographic is for your guest. For example, if you have a young professional who is going and staying at your hotel, then something like a digital check-in may be a great idea for them. But now if you have a senior citizen, like someone like my dad, that I would like to say, um, he actually would rather go to the front desk and speak to them, have a conversation with them. Because at the end of the day, we are in the hospitality business. So there's a fine line uh, when it comes to things like that. And also we, us as owners, we have to make sure that we have a proper ROI and uh, ROI can be calculated in several ways I think the number one is customer satisfaction. Uh, we have to track it through that to make sure the technology we're implementing is being uh, useful to our guest. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Next, I'm gonna turn to Abbas. How does digitalization improve the customer experience from your perspective? Um, also, if you could just add a little bit of your kind of thought on what's happening in the region as well, where you're seeing things for the industry. I think that would be helpful for our audience as well to hear a little bit more about your perspective since we're from so many different areas on this call right now. Abbas, we can't hear you, you're on mute. Thank you, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, for sure, the digitalization um, uh, improve uh, customer experience. Uh, digital uh, transformations is forcing the companies to change their business model and adapt the new market reality. While digitalization help, uh, 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 to help the company or the, the property to collect user data to gain new insight into the, uh, their customers, buying habits and the preferences and offering and help uh, uh, the property to develop more effective marketing campaigns. It also helps the users know what personal data is being collected and how it's being used at the marketing tools. Uh, digital uh, technology has transformed consumer habits like mobile devices, like apps, like machines, learning, automations, and smart rooms, and much more allow customers to get what they want almost exactly at the moment they need it. The new digital uh, technologies have cues a shift in customer experience, results in a new kind of modern buyers. Today, consumers are consistently connected, app native, and aware of what they can do with technology. Because of the opportunities that rise from using modern technology, customers often rate organizations on their digital customer experience. Uh, digital first inquire require you to rethink how you interact with your customer. Uh, especially uh, the mobile app, it's content all information about the uh, hotels uh, uh, you can ordering uh, and you can see all surfaces inside uh, the mobile app. Uh, even you can mobile key, it's a, it's a revolutions industry, uh, it's a hotel industry. It's bypassing the front office. Yeah, in the next five years uh, or, 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 or three years, uh, there is no, uh, it will be uh, the front office uh, department. It will be old uh, model. So it's transferred to uh, uh, mobile key to bypass uh, uh, the front office and go to the direct his room directory without referring and interfering with front office. It's a save the time, especially in the city hotels. Uh, thank you for this. That's thank all. you. No, thank you. Um, so talking about that customer experience, I think we, we'd, be, we'd be remiss to not talk about the facility side of that because I think that's part of that customer experience as well. So I'm gonna ask Armour a question about how can digitization technology support the facilities maintenance for the hospitality sector? How does that, how can we help on that side? Armor, you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Trish, for bringing this great point about facility maintenance, which is key uh, in uh, supporting hospitality projects. 
And for example, there are different technologies that could support the hospitality sector, such as laser scanning, for example. We're providing, it's becoming a standard in our industry now that Wendover would uh, provide a documentation of the history, how we built that building through laser scans before closing up ceilings and walls. So we can give the client and the hotel owner all the uh, what's behind ceiling and walls. So four years or five years from now, they can know uh, it supports their facility maintenance and management for the future. Um, modular construction, off-site construction, which modular units are assembled in a factory and later transported to, uh, to be installed on site is growing in popularity in the field. And Wendover has been in the forefront of that. So we can shed time off schedules and deliver projects early. So hotels can be occupied early in the process for a better ROI and also to support uh, fast track projects and uh, restoration. So modular and offset construction help in that regard. Automation, uh, automating technology can control and monitor production and delivery of various construction services, which saves, again, increase efficiencies and save, provide our uh, uh, hotel uh, companies uh, substantial cost savings and time savings. In addition, of course, to artificial intelligence, which is uh, like smart machines can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. And through that, you can increase efficiency and accuracy. There's so many ways that with laser scanning, modular construction, automation, and AI, we can support, combine these uh, different technologies to support efficiencies in the field. Thank you, Armour. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about digitization opportunities for hospitality. So I'm gonna ask Neil, how can digitalization help hotel owners do more with less? What are some of those opportunities? Of course. Um, so I think we were just talking about construction, but there are a lot of hotels that have been uh, older than 30 years. Uh, these are the typical box or limited service hotels. And uh, when we do renovations, it's hard sometimes to, uh, as uh, MR said, to dig up the walls, uh, break the walls and redo the wiring. So I think the future when it comes to construction, I feel that it has to be something wireless. Um, like it, it's hard for us to run fiber optics in the entire hotel when everything is already retro retrofitted. Um, so things like that, it's a tough challenge for hoteliers, um, but the future of digital technology, uh, there's always on how much do we wanna do versus what we can because when we try to implement a new technology in a hotel, what's happening is by the time we are 100% completed, there's already a next technology that's coming up which is faster, cheaper, and mo more effective. So I think that's what us as hotel owners, we are looking at the ROI. Uh, like the perfect example that I usually gave out was uh, we bought clock radios with the iPod dock on it. And we spent $150 per room and a typical hotel has 100 or 200 units. And we installed all of them and within three years they were obsolete. And while I was going around telling people about this, uh, a new revolution just happened where Apple changed it again. And now you have the USB-Cs uh, that are taking over. So us as hotel owners, obviously, we can't implement every new technology that comes out, but at the same time, we have to look at it and find out and do our, our due diligence on which one is uh, more acceptable by the mass public. Um, and it can be something as simple as even having devices that have Bluetooth, because I don't think that's going away. And when we talk about internet, um, I personally feel 5G will take over. Um, the internet and we may no longer need Wi-Fi. Um, or you can also have a completely opposite reaction where you'll have more demand for internet. So you'll need to pay more and get faster speeds uh, for your guests because uh, as things started to transform from in-person to online, for example, this conference, uh, people are using more bandwidth and us at our assets, we had to increase that and uh, we had a huge jump in our technology expenses uh, during COVID. Thank you, Neil. I'm gonna pass the same, similar question to Abbas. Um, how can digitalization impact your hospitality business, but also 
what are some of the tools, um, digital tools that are really useful for some hotels? Maybe what you're experiencing as well or things that you're seeing. Yeah, uh, it's already, uh, it's a very, the digitalizations, it's a very impact in our hospitality business. The impact of digital transformations uh, on our business varies, but will often lead to the following benefits of digitalizations, like increased revenue, uh, decreased operating costs, improve customer satisfactions. Digitalizations can help the business to manage in a more efficient, economic and su su sustainability way. It can help to increase our market uh, generations and our number of direct booking, as well as to acquire regular customer de destinations, help is the property and uh, uh, the hotel are strict in the planning and the construction of the hotel. The impact of digital transformations in our business varies, but it will often lead to the following benefits, as I mentioned before, like increased revenue, uh, decreased operating costs, improve customer satisfactions, uh, 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 optimizations of operations. Uh, that's all of the, the impact of, uh, of industry uh, hotels. Thank you. Thank you. And then Armour, can we talk a little bit about the latest construction technology and methods and how those might be able to help enhance that guest experience in those hospitality projects that we're talking about? So in hospitality projects, uh, guest experience is the most uh, important thing. And uh, I love uh, the example Neil mentioned before about checking out uh, uh, virtually versus in person, even though at the end of my stay, I like to go in person to the counter and say thank you for the great service, even if I check out virtually. It's uh, about the guest experience. And I think in the construction fields, there are so many ways we can uh, in increase the uh, guest experience satisfaction and the client satisfaction with the service or the product we give them. For example, early involvement and upfront collaboration between the construction uh, company and the client and the architect working together to, um, to provide constructability reviews in 3D models or to do augmented and virtual reality uh, walkthroughs of the hotel and spaces to make sure we can manage materials and finishes in a very immersive experience. At Wendover, we've been doing that with, uh, with our projects to let uh, clients step into their spaces way before the building construction begins. So at the, you know, when you look at samples of materials and spaces uh, on uh, 3D renderings or 2D drawings, it's very different when you look at it in an immersive experience and living it so you can streamline deci decision making that it's all helps with satisfaction, satisfaction of the client with the end product, as well as that uh, great guest experience. So technologies such as BAM and virtual and augmented reality, we see uh, ever evolving right now and helping hotel owners experience their unbuilt project in three dimensional and make uh, informed decisions. Thank you, Armour. Neil, I'm gonna turn this question over to you, which might be a, a, a long lengthy question, but I think there are a lot of people are asking this question. So I wanna to talk to you about what, what are the risks and challenges in front of hotel owners or really in front of that whole hotel industry um, as it faces that digitalization future? And then what are the opportunities? I know that in our conversation, you were talking about how hotels were always known as innovators. So I think that's a great yep. story to share here as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest risk right now, which is also an opportunity is the labor crisis that is happening in the United States. Um, before the pandemic, 91% of hotels in the nation had job openings and uh, COVID did not help. Uh, it's just only getting worse. Every single one of our hotels that we own have job openings. And it's not one job or two jobs. I'm talking about five positions that need to be filled at each hotel. So now owners, the opportunity is we're looking at technology. And uh, as Abbas said, digital check-in, there's so many other uh, various factors on that we can implement that will take away a lot of the labor uh, crisis. For example, right now I spoke to a company, they're based out of Atlanta. It's called EV Hotels. They designed a robot that can clean the room. Um, and it does almost everything except uh, the bed. Uh, so now you're saving 40% of labor that's right there. And, and when we talk about the future of the industry, um, 
we're talking about innovation. Hotel needs to be where when a guest goes back home that, hey, I want to have that into my home. So I think something that I share with people is when we talk about having everything digital, having digital walls in the room. So you have, uh, it replicates your bedroom when you travel to the hotel. It knows your profile. It'll have your family pictures on the wall. It'll have the same wall color. I think that's something we can do to make our guests feel at home. Uh, obviously, it hasn't been done yet, but uh, Amar, with your help, uh, with Windower, maybe that's something that the industry can tackle um, going forward. And um, at the same time, privacy comes into question because a lot of times um, consumers are afraid that um, their uh, privacy is going to be stolen. And um, so there's a fine line right there. But as long as the consumers are asking for it, we have to innovate ourselves. And, and sometimes, honestly, the consumers may not know that this is what they want until they see it. Uh, I think the perfect example is the 3D modeling uh, for us. There's so many times when we do a project where we may not know on how it's going to turn out, but because we're looking at on a piece of paper, it's 2D. But once it turns out, uh, when I see it with my eyes, I'm like, okay, I did not expect this. Um, and it's way better than what I imagined. And with 3D technology, or even uh, you go one step further and do VR, because a lot of companies are doing uh, virtual reality uh, when you're working on a project. I think that will definitely help. And uh, hotels have also taken advantage of VRs. Like for us, we have a 360 view of the room before you book it, you'll know exactly how your room is going to look like. So these are some of the innovations that the industry is doing. Obviously, it's not enough. Um, it's not where we were supposed to be. I feel like we're being adaptive or reactive instead of being proactive. And I think that's where the industry needs to change. Thank you. Very good. Um, Armour, I'm going to turn that to you because I would love to hear how, how can construction, how can the construction industry support the reactivation of the hospital hospitality industry and respond to today's challenges that our hotel owners are facing. Absolutely. Uh, Tris, you bring up a great point about uh, reactivation of the hospitality industry. A hotel room life cycle is about 10 years in average uh, for the uh, room life cycle and maybe less in high-end hotels. So I anticipate that even after the pandemic, uh, uh, hotels will have this even shortened uh, to stay relevant and uh, to meet all the needs and the competition. So uh, how can we help uh, with technology is industrialized construction. It's the future. Save time, cut time. Uh, uh, everything is made out ready if very efficiently in a factory setting. I see hotels going very green right now. Care a lot more about the sustainability uh, factors. So industrialized construction, you are saving energy in the factory, everything uh, uh, done uh, right, and then delivered to the site uh, with high quality. And even with, uh, Neil just mentioned about this, the robotics and skilled labor shortage, we have a skilled labor shortage right now. So industrialized construction will support the hospitality in that regard. Uh, and that all comes, I think, like a, a good example of uh, um, how we can do one-stop all-inclusive option, which we see the industry is going for, like uh, some of the beautiful hotels that uh, uh, at in Egypt, with, uh, who are best takes care of uh, in terms of technology, you will find all-inclusive one-stop with mixed use. You go there, you have the the beautiful Red Sea or Mediterranean or the ocean, and you have uh, places that bring people together, engaging public spaces with travelers looking to limit the number of places you go to. Um, so to, cre to create that with mixed use, you need to complex. Uh, you need to figure out the coordination for complex spaces. You only you not only have a hotel room now. You have even auditoriums. You have uh, restaurants with kitchen equipment. So this all. Uh, increase the complexity of MEB systems, which can be coordinated very well using BEM and laser scanning and drone mapping as the technology we use at Wondova, for example, to help expedite this coordination process and making sure that there are no surprises on site when we coordinate all these mixed use elements. So it's uh, hotels 
is becoming more complex to coordinate now with this uh, all one stuff in, 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 uh, inclusive. You are basically creating a very complex space architecturally wise and MEB wise and construction wise. And the only way we can really respond to that, make it very efficient for the client uh, is for the hotel owner is through technology, MEB coordination, 3D modeling um, to support this process very successfully and efficiently. Thank you. Thank you, Armour. Um, so Abbas, I, I know you talked about impact. How does dig digitalization benefit the hotel industry? What do you see? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very uh, impact and benefits for the, not for the guest experience, to increase the guest experience, as well for the hotel owners. It's a business digitalization reduce operating costs up to 20% and improve efficiently. It's also enable efficient cost management that implies a more effective control of productions uh, and sale processes. Uh, digitalizations also allow companies to create new business model and the revenue resources like enhancements data collections to send the marketing and the news newsletters for the uh, for the customers. Uh, great resources management, data driving uh, customer insights. And overall, better customer experience, as we mentioned before, that increase the customer experience during his, uh, his trip uh, and during his holidays. Uh, encourage digital uh, cultures with improved collaborations. I also increase profits and ability, improve, improve productivity. We take example for this or uh, benefits of the hotel industry. We take one example, like the Internet of Things refer to everyday devices which are fitted with internet capabilities allowing them to send and receive data this technology is hugely important within the hospitality industry because it can allow hotels to save on energy costs while also optimizing the hotel rooms without human interference thank you thank you Okay, so I think that I have a few questions that are coming in. I wanna be able to address those before I ask my final question for the audience. So I'll throw the question out there and then feel free to answer whoever on the panel. Um, I don't wanna direct it to anybody because a lot of you may have an opinion about some of these things. So our first question is, how does a hotelier de determine which solution suits his business best? What do you guys think? Who would like to start? For us, I mean, it's based on demographics. Uh, you have to figure out who your client mix is. Um, if you're in a university town where you have a lot of young professionals, then you need to invest heavily in technology. But now if you're in a leisure market where you have um, uh, older people like a resort city or resort town, then I, I personally would feel that you don't need to invest as he heavily as you would um, in, in the market that's a uh, younger generation. And um, you'll never have the right answer um, when it comes to technology, because if I were to implement one, uh, it may be obsolete as soon as I implement in all my hotels. So that's always the tricky question. I think doing the due diligence about the company that's implementing it and their history um, by implementing products and how uh, sustained they are in the industry is very important. In, in, in our side uh, of things, uh, we work closely with the clients at the beginning, for example, to pick the technologies that we can use or the methods we can build the project with. We work closely with the design team and uh, with the client to decide whether we want to go modular, for example. At Wendover, for example, we have... Uh, uh, modular experts, uh, project, great project managers and superintendents who are specialized in modular. They have great modular expertise and we combine that with technology such as BAM and virtual design construction, making sure we can mitigate risk and deliver that project. Uh, say if we do it comparison, modular construction, offsite construction versus traditional methods. And we show in a, a feasibility study and in 4D sequence how uh, how much time we can save and cost 
So it all depends on how we get involved. And this is a conversation with early on with the developer and the hotel owner on how, what approach we'll do. And during construction, of course, we apply all these different technologies, which we decide according to the challenge. If you have uh, topography and the land or lots of uh, stockpiles, we use laser scanning, drone mapping. If you have complex MEB systems, we do have integrated intensive uh, MEB BIM coordination to mitigate all the risk and make sure that everything fabricated will fit perfectly. And of course, re uh, renovation projects to existing hotels is different from new uh, construction. So it's all, we respond with all these great technology offerings uh, and combine them to respond to each unique uh, challenge uh, and we tailor these services to each uh, project. Thank you, Amr. Abbas, did you wanna add anything to that question? About solutions that, how to, as a hotelier, just determine which solution is, suits his journey or his, his business best. All right, I'm gonna to go to I the next maybe, question. Um, Abbas, you so, are muted. Yeah. Yeah. You might be. Uh, oh, there we go. That's okay. Sorry. Uh, no, this is uh, this is what I uh, are talking and all uh, our college here, uh, Nail and Am, that mentions that uh, uh, during the renovations uh, of the hotels uh, to keep the quality of service, uh, they did uh, they did uh, renovations uh, to keep up and first thing to look for for the technologies. Uh, that we mentioned that it's uh, a lot of benefits of, of uh, digitalizations uh, and uh, Internet of Things to save energy, as we mentioned in the, uh, in the, in the, in the event. Uh, and it's uh, because, especially in Egypt, uh, Amr knows that, that the energy cost is too expensive, especially in the hotels fields. And uh, every few months, we increase the cost. So that's why all hotel owners look for the technology to lead uh, uh, and the saving the uh, cost of 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 uh, of the industry of energy uh, to see the cost to increase the revenue because the cost of the operation of industry it's a high cost especially nowadays uh, in, in, in Egypt uh, because the the the, the, the will cancel the supported uh, for the the energies uh, for all uh, a country. Uh, and they will really, uh, make uh, encourage the hotel owners to invest more uh, uh, to make more investment in hotel industry because it's it's uh, the income of the capital of income uh, in Egypt. Uh, that's why all hotel owners uh, look forward to use digitalized uh, and energy cost uh, to save a lot of cost of energy. That's all for my side in Egypt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to have everyone to put on their futuristic cap and think about that digital hotel. Where does that journey go? What's the future with the digital hotel? So um, I think, well, sorry, Nile, you can continue. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was just going to add. Go ahead, Abbas. Yes, you're last. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, sorry. So, um, Tracy, we hosted a conference last month in Dallas, Texas for our members, and we had 6,300 hoteliers for AHOA that were present. Uh, something different that we did is um, we hosted a tech pitch where you had new startups present their ideas to our membership, and the entire goal was who can give us the biggest ROI. So, uh, we're actually implementing a couple of the companies at our hotel. The first one was it was a vending machine for hot food and they have really good food uh, on there. And you basically go up there and you purchase it for $7 and it'll give you chicken wings or it'll give you, um, there are, I think so many options, uh, chicken pot pie, pizza, and so on. Uh, for us to implement that technology, it doesn't cost us anything because it's a profit share, right? So now you can, you can implement technology without paying anything for it because you're basically getting a chunk from the revenue. Second thing that we are implementing at our assets is a company that we partnered with. Uh, they're based out of Indianapolis. It's called Con Kiosk, where it's a checking kiosk. You basically walk up to it. And uh, as we have stated on the call that labor is a huge problem in the US. 
you walk up to the kiosk and it'll video connect you with someone in India where they can rent you the room online, uh, all via video. And they'll even get you a key. You can even in insert cash in the machine and it'll print you your key and you're good to go. So now we're trying to find solutions on um, how can we save and the ROI on that is so much more than what we're spending. I think these are the actual facts instead of uh, opinions um, because we're looking at real numbers and real dollars saved because if we say $1, it's coming on the bottom line as the NOI. Uh, when we talk about the future of the industry, I think everything is going digital. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, you have digital walls in the room and it'll mimic your bedroom. I think that's where the future is. Uh, even faster internet, 5G internet. I think things that will save us money because technology doesn't always have to cost you money. Um, I feel any new technology that comes on market, uh, the entire goal is how can we be more efficient and more cost effective? And that's the goal uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. How about you, Abbas? You had a couple comments you wanted to share. Yeah, I think from my side, the, the digitalizations in the futures will be reduce uh, the stuff and the value in the uh, hotel industry because every single will be digitalized and automations, uh, especially from the booking for booking. Uh, it's, uh, you can book through the, the booking engines and uh, fill in your uh, registration card uh, before arrival and upload your ID and passport before arrival. And before arrival, uh, 24 hours, we will, you will get uh, the mobile key. Uh, so uh, you can you, you don't you, you you don't use the, any human being uh, in the process till make check in, and also till check out. We can make a check out through mobile or through kiosk. Uh, uh, so uh, everything will be digitalized and automations. Uh, even you can uh, inside the, the the hotel you can make ordering uh, or you can uh, pick up any service by mobile or by a QR code. You you didn't need to call uh, the employee in the hotel. Thus, the services uh, or uh, for kitchen guys, everything will be automations and they will be using robots as well uh, in the hotel industry uh, to for the luggage uh, to uh, for the room service. Uh, so we will see revolutions uh, in, the host, uh, in, in the hotel industry in the future in the next uh, five years. Thank you. Thank you. Amr, I'm hearing automation, so I feel like you need to say something. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Th thank you, Tracy, uh, for all the great uh, uh, questions. And uh, I totally agree with Neil and Abbas on the future and in order actually the responsibility on us as the builders who uh, make those spaces and those visions come to life uh, i love the example uh, and i'd love to see it uh, how you click on the button when you it mimics your room uh, actually maximizing spaces if you have a hotel room that's very small how you can maximize the space efficiently you click on the bottom the bed turn all these places i've seen that example in a dorm in new england design uh, a small dorm that can turn into a living space or a study space or a bedroom. Uh, maximizing spaces is key also, especially in Europe and in the areas where, uh, like Amsterdam or Paris, where the space is very limited, but you want to give this great experience. Uh, all this goes to, uh, to a uh, brief application. Uh, I think the future in our industry uh, construction is not hammer anymore or um, manual work, but it's more of automation and prefabrication. Additive manufacturing can play a big role in that. Uh, so we can accomplish all these great designs and flexible spaces in additive manufacturing. It goes assembled on site. Uh, sustainability will play a big role in that and how we build sustainably. Uh, how the hotel industry has been uh, playing a big role in that, you know, when you throw all your towels on the, on the floor before you leave to make sure that uh, we save water. The same thing as uh, in the construction industry, we've been building more efficiently. Uh, in a factory setting, we can be, be, save more energy. And uh, so I see that the future will be more of prefabrication and sustainable uh, design for construction. Thank you so much for this great discussion. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Armour. 
Okay, so my closing question, because we are winding down to the final minutes here. So I'm going to go around our virtual room, and I want to hear any closing thoughts from each of our panelists. But more importantly, I want you to each give one tip or one tip or advice or something that people can't lose sight of from this conversation that's critical for them to think about tomorrow. So I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to have Armour. Why don't you start first? Something that your takeaway comments, but also something for our audience that you think is very important and very um, hot that they need to be thinking about this tomorrow morning. Um, uh, if there is one thing I would love to uh, stress on, uh, always use the technology as a solution based. Um, f uh, technology should offer always a solution that provides substantial cost savings, make people life easier and save energy and help our environment and the planet. So this is how I envision technology should be solution-based, not only technology for the sake of using latest tools. It's not about the tool. It's not about the latest uh, technology, but it's also how this technology provides solution and how this, that's how we're gonna advance the industry, whether it's the construction or the hospitality industry, which is are very related uh, to always work as a solution-based uh, technology to offer solutions to challenges that we face every day. Thank you, Armour. I'm gonna now turn to Abbas for your closing thoughts and your one tip or recommendation for our audience today. Yeah, uh, I agree totally with, uh, with Armour that uh, if we need the solutions, you, go to, you should to use the technology. Uh, as we mentioned, the constructions uh, not need hammer in the uh, next uh, future in the, for the, the technology. Like, uh, for example, small example uh, that China uh, built one hotel, big hotel in three weeks. So uh, 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 technology, it's not luxury uh, to do, uh, uh, to make a propaganda for luxuries. No, it's benefits and the saving cost, as uh, we mentioned, and uh, to, to find solutions. If you have problems, Technology, it's a solution for your problems. Thank you. Thank you, Abbas. And now, Neil. Yeah, for us, it's all about ROI. Um, there has been times where our team members at the hotel are like, hey, we need to implement this or we need to implement that. But sometimes us as owners, we have to look at the ROI um, on how much are we spending versus how much are we saving. And sometimes it's okay to uh, spend more because our ROI is so much more at the end of the day. So as Amr and Abbas both stated, um, if we can have, uh, if you when you want to implement any technology, and if you can present an actual plan on this is what the projected ROI is going to be, it will make the decision so much easier for us to implement uh, new technology. And uh, for closing, I would like to thank everyone for being on this uh, and a great discussion. And I apologize for my background; my flight was delayed. And I haven't reached my hotel. I just pulled over at a random uh, school right now. Um, but thank you so much for having me. And uh, I think it was a great discussion. Thank you. I want to take the moment too to thank both uh, all Neil, Armour, and Abbas for joining us today. This has been a great conversation. I'm excited for the future of hospitality. And I hope to be able to travel again very, very soon, as we all hope. So thank you again for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your virtual you. conference. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy. Bye-bye. Yes. Good night. Bye-bye.